against ISIS or ISIL, but a Virginia senator says a congressional resolution is necessary to authorize the fight against ISIS. Joining me now is Senator Tim Kaine, who, like the president, is a Democrat. Senator Kaine, welcome. Bill, good to be back with you. Thanks. Why is a resolution necessary now? Has what's been going on, yeah. what the president's been doing up until now, been unauthorized or even illegal? Well, I would, definitely it's been unauthorized. So today is the 10th month anniversary of the beginning of the war against ISIL. The U.S. started bombing campaigns on August 8th of 2014. The Constitution makes it very plain that Congress is supposed to declare war. And uh, Congress so far has done nothing. And if you were ISIL, you don't really have any evidence that Congress has any concern with what you're doing. If you're our allies, does Congress care? If you're our troops, does Congress even care? So I introduced an authorization in September that led to a committee vote in December, but while the bill got out of committee, it died on the floor when there was a new Congress. Today, Senator Jeff Flake, who is a Republican of Arizona, so a bipartisan, bipartisan. Senator. We're, we introduced it in the Senate, a resolution to finally put Congress on the hook to have a debate and have a vote about whether this mission is in the national interest and, and how to define the mission appropriately. Is it easier for Congress to just put it all on the president? I mean, yes. if, if on one hand you attack, attack him for saying, well, it's unauthorized, on the other hand, you're not necessarily taking up the, uh, the resolution. Bill, and I, that's the only thing that to me would explain why for 10 months Congress hadn't said anything. Congress would prefer to bash the president, you don't have a strategy, but when it comes to casting a vote and showing the backbone to cast a vote, yes or no, this is a hard question. This non-state, you know, uh, terrorist organization, what do we do in Iraq? What do we do in Syria? Because how Should do you define use... winning? What does winning look like Very against that militant group? Like you said, doesn't have an actual state. They call themselves a state, but they don't actually have a state territory. Yeah, this is not war in a traditional sense where there is going to be a formal declaration and then a peace treaty signed on a destroyer in Tokyo Harbor. This is a group that doesn't follow any of the Geneva Conventions about the way that war is to be carried out. The atrocities they're committing are completely barbaric. We all believe that the primary responsibility for fighting this terrorist threat should be the nations in the region. We can't police a region that won't police itself, but we should be providing support to regional actors as they are battling this threat, which is a long-term threat against the United States. So Senator Flake and I tried to listen to both sides, Democrats and Republicans, bridge some differences between the parties and put something on the table because we think that our troops, and there's about 3,500 who are deployed, some from Virginia right now fighting this war, so many they need to know Congress is, is behind them. Exactly. Well, and when you look at what's happened in the Middle East and the president's po foreign policy, for example, Syria, we were told one day there's a red line about chemical introduction of mm -hmm. chemical weapons. Uh, then we're told at the same time Assad must go. Yeah. But do we in fact need a strong man like a, an Assad or a Saddam mm -hmm. Hussein to battle the militants and keep Iranian influence at bay? Well, not, not an Assad. Assad is a barbaric dictator, and and sure there would be the question if he were not there, who would follow him? But you. You can't. Uh, I mean, are there is there an identifiable group that we can arm? I mean, this is the debate you're going to have in the Senate. It no is. Doubt. Who are the rebels that we're going to arm? Yeah. And what is the group that's going to rise up? And well, I've spent some time actually visiting in the region with folks who are connected with the Syrian opposition of Bashar al-Assad, and there are groups who are moderate who want to promote a democratic future for that country who are not connected with terrorist organizations. But there are also groups who are battling Assad who are connected to Al Qaeda, who are connected to ISIL. There's some evidence recently that Assad and ISIL may have reached an accord among themselves. Very, very complicated. A little bit easier in Iraq. In Iraq, there is a government, uh, the Abadi government, that has asked for the United States' help. In their meeting today, I believe, uh, in uh, Geneva. Indeed. The president met with the uh, Prime Minister Abadi today to talk about what we could do to, to shore up Iraq. Um, and so, again, it's, a, it's the Iraqis' responsibility. Uh, but if they're willing to shoulder that burden, then the U.S. should be part of a of an international coalition that will help them do that. Um, but you have to define how to describe the mission, how to define what success is, what is the U.S.'s role, what should other nations do. And that's what uh, Senator Flake and I, we, we've, we've got to get Congress to take this seriously. All right. And we look forward to that debate. Hopefully we'll have that debate and we can hammer all that out because right now there are a lot of questions. There Senator Kane, thank you so much for coming in. You bet, Bill. Glad to. All right, let's send it over to the